so we are going to discuss some important things uh, related to engineering drawing. Many times students find it difficult to imagine uh, the problems of solids. So what exactly happens in case of solids when they say that the solid is inclined? That is what we are going to look with the help of an animation. Then we are going to see uh, most of the time students find it very difficult to understand which line to be uh, made uh, dark and which line to be made dashed. You know, hidden lines and the visible lines. How to identify them, how to do that on the drawing paper and uh, how to get full marks regarding that thing. So we are going to see few concepts regarding that. So let us see first regarding solids. So this is the observer. You are going to have this observer. Imagine that you are standing over here. And whenever you imagine an object like solid, suppose that this is a square prism. So now if they say that the square prism is inclined, so what exactly is happening? So this is a square prism, you are the observer okay, and you are looking from here. So you are going to see this particular part right? and this is going to get projected on the uh, VT plane or the whatever plane we have. right? Then suppose if they say that the solid is inclined, okay, what happens is this is what is going to happen. right? The solid is going to get inclined like this. Right? But if you observe over here, the initial solid and the inclined solid are going to be on one another. Right? So what happens is when you are going to solve the problem, we are going to make sure that this solid comes little away from this initial position of the solid. Right? So this is what is going to happen. The solid is going to go and make a, its independent position. So this is the initial position of what we draw and this is the inclined position. Right? Then afterwards what happens is this can be inclined further also regarding as per the question is. So this is just an example of what actually happens when we say that the solid is inclined. Okay. So this can be inclined with respect to this axis or with respect to the base as per you know, the question is given. We will take one more uh, an example of a cylinder. So this is a cylinder, you are the observer and then from here we are going to incline the uh, cylinder and then project the final outcome. Right? So what happens actually is this cylinder gets inclined like this. Right? So this is the actual position, this is the inclined position. right? So this is what is going to happen and then as we have already said, these two are coming one above other, right? so we cannot draw the diagram properly, clearly. So we will take this separately and we will place at this position. Right? So we are going to draw the initial position and then we draw the uh, final position. Right? Similarly, if you see, there is a, a pyramid, a square pyramid right? and this solid was resting on the base. Sometimes they say that the solid is resting on the base. This particular solid, which is a pyramid, is resting on one of its corner. Right? So what happens is, again, it is going to get inclined. Right? You can see this how it is getting inclined. And then they take it separately and then we are going to project it. So this is exactly what happens when you know, we talk about the projection of solids, first stage inclination. And then I have not shown the second stage inclination over here, but we can imagine what exactly happens. The solid will get inclined and then it will come somewhere over here. Then we project all the uh, three stages. Right? Now, there is one concept which I want to like to clear. Now see, in this case, what happens is when the observer is looking from here, so there might be, you know, if he is observing this diagram, this particular solid, so this will be visible, right? So he is going to draw this as the dark lines. Okay. When he sees from the front, but when he sees from the front, there is one more edge which is going to be here, which is behind. And this is going to be not visible, right? So students find it very difficult to imagine. This is a simple solid, so there is there are like only few lines. But if the position of the observer changes, suppose he, he goes for making the top view, so he is going to come somewhere over here, right? And from top he is going to observe. So in that case, what will happen is this particular lines are going to be hidden. Right? So this is going to come hidden lines because he is not going to see that lines from the top. And this also will be, this will be dark if he is able to, if the observer is going for the top, right. So, what happens exactly is in exam, students are unable, to, some students are not able to understand how to draw the dark lines and the dashed line. So, we will just see one small uh, trick by which 99% times the answer will, correct, will be correct if you just try to follow this pattern. Okay. So, let us see. 
So this is a sample of a problem which I have solved. Okay, so this is a hexagonal. This you can say this is a hexagonal pyramid. Okay, and this hexagonal pyramid is inclined at some angle with respect to axis, and we want to project the top view, right? And also the side view. Okay, sometimes they will say only to meet the top view. Sometimes they will say also to draw the side view. So what happens is. When students are drawing this diagram, this diagram is okay because they are just simply copying it and pasting it. When they are able, when they are trying to do this diagram, the top view, they get confused what to draw hidden and what to draw down. So let us see how to solve this. Now, see, I have made a theorem that there are four steps. Okay, so if you follow these four steps, 99 percent times the question will be right, and in one percent cases, we have to use our logic. Okay, so brain like our imagination, right? So let us see how to do that. First, the uh, the theorem says connect all exterior points as dark lines, right? So now I have projected all the lines from here. I have projected all the lines from here, and we have marked the intersection points, right? So you can see O is coming here, A is coming over here, B is coming over here, C, D, E, and F, and again O. So this is all everybody is able to do. Now the first rule says. Connect all exterior points as dark lines. So, what are the exterior points? Try to see. This point, this is making a loop, right? So, C, D, E, F, and O back. So, these are the exterior points, right? And these points are the interior points, right? So, the rule says connect all exterior points as dark lines, right? So, what we will do is we will try to connect the all the exterior points as the dark lines, right? So let us go for. So we will connect O to C first as dark line, then O to F as dark line, then F to E as dark line, E to D as dark line, and D to C as dark. Line, right? This is done. Now, once we have done this, we will go to the second uh, step of the rule. What is the second step? It is saying locate the axis of opposite diagram and place the giving arrow. Right? Now this is the diagram which we want to create. We want to make the answer for. What is the opposite diagram? This diagram is the opposite diagram, right? Because this is that this diagram is going to come after looking at this particular diagram from this side, right? So this is the viewing arrow. Okay. Now you see from top, we are going to get this top, right? So look at the axis of opposite diagram. So what is the axis of this diagram? You can see O is over here, O is over here. So this is going to be my axis, right? So I have located the axis. Now, what you have, what happens is in your exam, when you are solving the problem, you keep your pen instead of making a line. Like I have made a line because I am to teach you. But in exam, you keep a pen like this on the diagram, or a scale or a pencil, and you mark the weaving arrow. Where is the weaving arrow? We are saying the place the weaving arrow. So you just make a small weaving arrow with your pencil in a very light way, and this is going to be weaving arrow. This is going to be the axis. Okay. What is the third step they are saying? Line in between axis and arrow make it dark. So where is the axis? This is the axis. This is the arrow. Line in between. This are the lines. This area, right? So this area, any line which comes in this area, you make it dark. And line not in between axis and arrow. Which is that area? This is the axis. This is the arrow. Line not in between. Which is that area? This area is the line which is not in between axis and the arrow, right? So whatever comes in this area, we are going to make it dash, right? So let us see how to do that. Again, I am making the axis for your difference. I am making the arrow. Now let us go to the diagram. We have to make uh, first. We will try to see the base edges of the hexagonal pyramid. What is the base edges? AB. Okay. So where is AB over here? See, arrow is here, axis is here, AB is over here. So it is not in between arrow and axis, right? So what we will do is we will connect them. With the dash line, this is the rule, right? Make it dash, right? Then that is find that fourth rule. Now, after A B, we are going to join B C. Where is B C? B is over here, C is over here, right? So B C arrow is over here, axis is over. Here. So that will is not in between arrow and axis. So it will be again dash. So we are going to make it dash. Okay. Then try to see uh, after B C C D. Okay, so C D is over here. But C D is already dark by our first rule, so leave it. Don't worry about it. Okay. Next, after C D D E. Okay. 
D is also again dark by first rule, right? So we are going to leave it. Again, E F already dark by first rule. F A F A is not joined till now, but we want to know whether F A will be dark or dark. We'll again go back to the rule. Try to see where is F A. F is over here. A is over here, right? So F A. So F A is not in between arrow and axis, right? So F A is not in between arrow and axis means we are going to make it dash. Right, this is going to be a bit dash. I'm going to make it as dash. Right, simple, easy. Now, once you are done with the base edges, do not skip. Do not go for the side view. First, complete the front top view properly. Now, what is left? The uh, slant edges is left. What is slant edge? O A, O B, O C, O D, O E, and O F. Right. So let us see O A. Where is O A? O A is from here to here. I have to join it. How to join? Dark or dash? I don't know. I have to check. So let us see. Apply this rule. Where is O A? O is over here. A is over here. So this line is going to be not in between arrow and axis. So this is going to come dash line, right? So I'm going to connect this as dash line, right? So O A I have made it dash. Similarly, O B also you can see. O is over here. B is over here, right? And again, it is not in between arrow and axis. So again, it can be written, shown as dash line, right? So this is going to be dash. Then OC. Let us see OC. OC is over here. It is already dark by first rule, so no need to worry. Then OD. Where is OD? O is over here. D is over. We have to connect it because it is not connected. Let us see where is OD over in this case. So O O is over here. D is over here. Right. So it is in between arrow and axis. Right. So it will be if line is in between arrow and axis, make it dark. Right. So I am going to connect O to D as dark. This is going to be dark. Okay. Then after O D, we are having O E. Again, O is over here, E is over here, arrow is here, and axis. So again, it is coming in between arrow and axis, so it will be following the third rule. So O E will be dark, right? This is going to be on like this. Then O F. O F is already dark by first rule, so leave it. No need to worry, right? Then. We will make the axis line because axis space is available, right? So once we are done with this, we are now going to go for the side view. For side view, we have already made the points, right? So again, what will happen? We have already made the points. We have plotted the point. We have taken projections from here. We have taken projections from here, and we want to identify which will be dark and which will be dark, right? So what will happen? Let us see. Oh, uh, we will first follow the first rule again. Connect all the exterior points as dark line. So, what are the exterior points? Let us see. See the see the loop. Be careful over here. This D, E, F, A, B, C, and D again. Right? There is a point which is below, which is O point. Right? So this is not going to come in the exterior loop. Right? So that point is not going to come. Right? So we will follow the rule now. Connect all the exterior points as dark line. Right? So I'm going to connect A B. B C C D and from here I am going to connect D E. Observe carefully. This is D E, then E F, then F A. Right? These are going to come dark. Connect all these points are dark. Fine. Then we will try to see now. I am going to connect. Uh, check up whether you have base edges are connected. Yes. Now everything is connected. A B is connected. B C C D D E E E F and F A. So all base edges are getting connected. Now we go for the slant edges. Where is slant edges? O A is the slant edge. O one A is not a slant edge. See O one A is over here. O is over here, right? So be careful. So we have to connect O to A, O to B, O to C, O to D, O to E, and O to F. Not O one. No, don't take this point. Be careful. Many students make a mistake, right? So. O to A. If I want to connect O to A, whether it will be dark or dash, I don't know, right? So let us apply the rule. What does the rule says? Mark the weaving arrow. So this is the side view. For this, the weaving arrow will be over here, and mark the axis. Correct? Right? So what will happen? Where is O A? O is over here, and A is over here. Correct? So I want to join O A. So The rule says if it is not in between arrow and axis, it is going to be dash. So it is not in between arrow and axis. Arrow is over here, axis is over here. So this area is not in between arrow and axis. So O A is going to come over here. So that means my O A is going to be 
dotted, right? So this is my O, this is my A, this is going to become dotted, right? Dash. Then OB, again OB is over here, again the same thing will apply and this will become dash, right? Then OC, where is OC? Now observe carefully, OC is on the axis line, right? So I told you 99% time this rule will be applicable, sometimes in special cases the rule will not be uh, applicable, right? So we have to use our uh, logic. Now what is OC? Observe, this is an base of the hexagon, try to imagine when you have mind and this is the body of the hexagon which is a pyramid. So the axis, uh, so the pyramid is something like this and there is a base over here. So when the sides of this OC is going to be like this and this is the co uh, base covering which is going to come, so I will not be able to see OC. Right? That means if it is not visible, I can make it dash. Right? So this will be dash. So that is how you use your logic. Then OD also. Try to observe where is OD. Okay, so OD is over here. O is over here, D is over here. This is the arrow, this is the axis. So by, by following the rule, we will see that okay, make it dark. Right? But try to understand. This is going to come O and D. Right? So be careful now. Even though the rule, if you follow the rule, it will say it will come to come dark. But actually, in reality, this is the base. Okay. This is the base and this particular thing, you can see there is a gap over here. So it is little inclined. So this is the base and this is going to be inclined. That means I am not going to be seeing it. Right? So that is going to be not visible. Therefore, I have to use my logic and understand that this is going to be hidden. So I am going to make it as dash lines. Similar, similarly, we can make it same thing for OE also. And OF, again, OF is on the axis line. Right? Afterwards, we can, you know, same thing what you can follow is the OC pattern for OF also. So it is going to be hidden and it is going to be inside. So that is going to be uh, that. Right? So you can see in this case the rule was completely applicable. But in this case the rule was partially applicable and we used our logic for making the dash lines for the other part. Now observe one more thing. What happens is this is the point from where we are getting all the dash points. Right? So one more logic what we can understand is from one point if there is one dash line coming all other points all other lines will also be dashed lines right you cannot get a dark line from here or you cannot get a dark line from here why because this point these are all lines are dash lines so this also has to be dash lines right that is something which you should keep in mind and this is going to be our axis so this was something regarding the solids part, how to draw dark, dark and dashed lines.